This is yet another one of those games that has been sitting in my Steam library for far too long. Let's dust it off and take a look. Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet is a puzzle adventure game that was originally released for the Xbox 360, before being brought to the PC. You play as a small alien creature whose planet has just been invaded by a terrible and strange blight. You take to your spaceship and travel to the source of the infection to try to save your dying planet. It plays a bit like a Metroidvania with a menagerie of combat and puzzles for the player to deal with and a whole host of tools to use. The game plays much more like a puzzle game than anything else. Most combat that is encountered is rather secondary as enemies are not terribly dangerous. The enemies exist for the most part to complicate the player's attempts to solve whatever puzzle has been presented to them. A good deal of those puzzles use the player's ability to move objects around with a robot arm, which I thought was the most interesting and novel of abilities that the player is given. There's a lot of focus on the grabbing, whether it be to transport small sponges to block pipes, or to stop yourself from being whisked away by strong winds. What really made the robot arm mechanic more interesting was the fact that you had to use a controller to control it. It actually made the picking up more difficult, which also made it more interactive and interesting than if it was as simple as moving a mouse to pick things up. While the puzzles were interesting, I will say that there were no particularly difficult ones in the main gameplay. While I haven't been to every secret area, it is still of note that basically every puzzle on the main story was a trivial event. The solutions presented themselves in mere moments, even if the execution took longer. The few puzzles that weren't like this were the skill-based puzzles, particularly when the player uses the missiles. Basically, there are areas where the player has to direct their homing missile through a narrow passageway, not bumping walls or taking too long. These were the biggest challenges as there was such a small margin of error involved. For the most part, as I have said, the enemies weren't a significant threat. Where the combat became more interesting was the boss fights, which is particularly interesting as the boss fights were all puzzles in one way or another. There was a particular thing that had to be done, whether it was electrifying particular sites or shooting parts of the boss in a particular order. From this, I think it can be noted that Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet is far more of a puzzle game than any other type of game. It takes the various tools available to the player to craft kinetic challenges instead of just throwing dangerous creatures at the player. Now it is to be noted that the puzzles don't really go in depth with the tools that the player uses. Because the game is so short, which is something we'll discuss in just a moment, the game doesn't have all that much time to build on the various tools that the player is given and actually craft more complex challenges. For the most part, only one or two tools is ever necessary to actually solve a puzzle. This is certainly a serious problem in the gameplay, as that's really the main reason that these puzzles were so simple to solve, was that the game never built on itself properly. I would also like to bring attention to the really interesting part of the gameplay, that being how the game plays with the player's perspective. In one area, a gear world, the player has to enter gears that allow them to move from one area to another. These aren't just pathways, instead the gears actually move the world around the player, changing their orientation and allowing the player to enter areas they couldn't in previous orientations. Of all of the mechanics in the game, this one stands as the most innovative. Few games actually completely reorient the world around the player, and Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet's use of this system was masterful. Now let's talk about the narrative aspects. There aren't very many. Beyond the story of the alien, there's just a bit of backstory expressed by picking up some collectibles. Now, I would normally follow this up with, this isn't a good thing. However, I think that kind of misses the point of the narrative of this game. Instead of being a plot arc of characters and motives, this game is attempting to present to the player a vignette of an alien world. The goal is to show the player the different forms of the plague and the strange things that it can create, as well as the interplay between the old species technology and the organic scourge. If the narrative is understood in that sense, I think Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet did an excellent job of guiding the player through an alien environment. The one big issue with the game is its length. 
It only took me a paltry five hours to complete the campaign. Granted, I haven't gotten all of the collectibles, but I did get over two thirds of them by the end. For a $15 game, the five hour campaign is far too short, not to mention that the game wouldn't have been hurt at all by putting in more content. Now one can extend playtime by playing either of the other two modes of the game, but both of these are exclusively multiplayer, or at least I couldn't get them to work single player, so that does have to be taken into account. In the realm of aesthetics, the game is fairly solid. The creatures are certainly alien, although some are rather gaudy, such as the Cthulhu alien that shows up at one point. And while most of the art fits perfectly into the environment, I did notice some assets, particularly some of the enemies, had a color scheme that felt out of place, either being too bright or just somewhat off. Despite these few issues, the world retains its dangerous and alien appeal. In the end, I would recommend this game. The high price to play time is a concern, but I found that there were more than enough interesting elements to overcome that. The one thing I will also note is that the game is meant to be played with a controller. I didn't delve into the keyboard controls, so walk that path at your own peril. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.